Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining Oasis and Abbott Exchange and taking time out of your busy schedules to go through this webinar presentation today as we talk about building a world-class AP department and really take a look at AP Automation 101. The topic of AP Automation is really one that seems to come up in almost every conversation I have with our clients these days. I was actually out visiting a client just yesterday, and they've been an Oasis client for over 20 years, and they informed me that they were looking to automate their AP processes as they wanted to centralize the approval process and have one reliable, secure spot to store electronic invoices. So I think during this session, they, and along with you, will find so many solutions that will resonate with your businesses today as we run through a quick demonstration of AP best practices and look at a uh, Avid Exchange solution in action and in with a live Q&A. So before we begin, though, I want to start off with just a few housekeeping items. Um, you can absolutely ask us questions. We want involvement, and you can do so by using the questions queue at the bottom of the GoToWebinar, and we'll answer all questions, or as many as we can get to, at the end of the session. There will also be a recording sent out to everyone after the session is completed, too. So if you have to jump off for any reason or you want to forward to one of your teammates or colleagues, you get a recording in your email inbox by tomorrow. So just to start off real quickly, a little bit about Oasis Solutions, and I should probably introduce myself. I'm Aaron Rosenberg, Senior Vice President of Business Development here and a partner at Oasis. And as I mentioned, we were talking with a client yesterday who's been with us for over 20 years. We actually celebrated our 27th anniversary yesterday. We were founded in 1991, and we provide a variety of different business solutions for our customers throughout the Southeast region. We're headquartered here in Louisville. We have customers and offices in Lexington and Nashville, but we do service over 700 clients in 35 plus states around the US. Uh, we're gonna focus on people in process first before software. Uh, we do have software partners like Avid Exchange that we pick as our best in breed partners within certain categories for different types of business automation, in this case, payables automation. Uh, we focus on what we bring to the table, um, and who we bring to the table so that our customers can rely on us to source out the best technologies to help their businesses today. And as technology continues to change rapidly in the marketplace, we look for the best people to help bring us um, the best options as well, which is why our team is made up of uh, former CFOs, controllers, some CPAs on staff, software developers that have really been on the other side of the implementation table. So they know that when you go through uh, software improvement projects, there's a lot at stake there, and it's not the only job that you're gonna be doing, right? Most of us are working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, and you add a project onto your plate, you want somebody that can help navigate and guide you through a successful implementation. And we have over 250 years of combined experience on staff doing just that. So at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to Michael Johnson. We're very pleased to have him on another webinar. He's the sales manager of strategic channels at Avid Exchange. And later on, we'll be hearing from uh, Brittany who will manage the Q&A session. So Michael, it's all yours. Thank you, Aaron. I really do appreciate everybody's time and attention today. We've allotted about 30 minutes, so we've got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, a lot of our folks just returned from Sweet World last week out in Las Vegas. So maybe some of you on the phone were there as well. As you can tell, and you can see by attending those events, there's lots of different options out there for finance people. So I've been around for a long, long time. So just to date myself, I remember the one right system when I worked at ADP. So <laughs> I've seen technology come and go. I've seen it accelerate at a rate that I don't think any of us would have anticipated uh, in the last 10 years alone. Uh, so I've, I've run businesses. I've worked for Fortune 500 companies. I've worked for small startups, software startups, technology-driven companies. Uh, in, in some companies who are still around, and I once did two tours of duty with Kodak. So, yes, Kodak is still in business. So, uh, I do appreciate your time today. I work for Avid Exchange. We're headquartered out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, we have uh, started this business of automating uh, folks' AP processes back in 2000. So, 18 years of experience in the room, in the house, uh, helping companies take advantage of technology. And a lot of the things I'll share with you are just kind of life lessons, things I've seen along my journey of running businesses and as well as working for Avid Exchange. Because just like Aaron and his team, 
we really focus on people first and process. Um, you know, technology is technology, but there, there is, there's this great TV show that I watched. This, he talks about the three Ps, people, process, and product. So all those things have to be aligned in, for already, for, in order for you to be successful. So we're going to share some stories, some learnings that we've seen uh, over our tenure here in the AP automation space. But just a first couple of quick facts. We've grown over um, 8,000 clients, over 1,200 employees. I say, you know, I say that in particular because I remember when I first started, we were about 250 employees. So in the last four years, we've seen some rapid growth. Uh, we're well backed and funded by companies uh, like Bain Capital, a number of investors, and over the last uh, two years, three years alone, we've taken in half a billion dollars of investments. What's that mean to you on the phone? Is that we've got some deep pockets. We can address a lot of the technology gaps that people have that are experiencing in their world. And we can bring those best practices in a cloud environment to your operation to improve efficiencies, gain control, increase visibility. These are themes I hear time and time again when I, when I speak with financial prof, uh, professionals in the world today. So let's get on with the, the show and uh, hopefully you enjoy what we have to talk, to about, talk about today. So let's start. Let's get into this. So every, every good meeting needs a start point, right? An agenda. We're going to talk about the, the problem with paper, and this we're going to use some studies and some research from paper stream, pay stream advisors. Uh, they're one of those industry pundits that goes out and, and talks to folks like you and to benchmark where you are in your process, where you're going, what technology that may be available to you. So we'll talk about the problem with the paper. Uh, this is a tough conversation because I often find that people don't see a problem with paper. It's something that they're used to, something that they're comfortable with. I think one of the biggest uh, words that finance folks love and hate at the same time is the word change. How do I change a process if I don't even realize it's a problem? So a lot of times those problems uh, um, eventually um, come to the surface when there's a problem, when something goes wrong. So we're going to talk about what the, each role uh, in um, your finance organization and why they should consider AP automation. So what specifically will a CFO, a controller, or an AP manager uh, be looking at in order to help their help their organization, help their business. We'll talk about how the, these uh, automation benefits those roles and we'll really transition into a, a roadmap on AP automation and what to do when you know it's time to get there. And that's important. I, I think from the beginning of a lot of my conversations, you might hear me if we ever talk, I'll just say, hey, what's going on? Um, usually, if, if you can tell me that there's something happening within the business, you're growing rapidly, uh, maybe somebody, uh, a senior uh, team member is retiring, uh, you don't want to replace an additional headcount, so maybe you're merging. Uh, lots of things are going on in your business. Oh, somebody's driving. So, Aaron, you've taken over the mouse. <laughs> so, hang on, let me go back. Let me take. A, I'm going to take Aaron's control away for a minute here. I'm sorry about that. That's I mean, that's no problem. That happens. I should have. I should have. Should have swatched you out there. Switched you. I'm out. a control freak. <laughs> yeah, so and let's start with the problem with paper and the costs associated with your AP process. So let's take a look at this. Uh, maybe some of these icons resonate with you, maybe they don't, but it typically maps out what folks are doing in a typical AP uh, step by step. You know, somebody's opening mail, routing it out for people uh, to get approvals. They may be doing a photocopy or a copy for backup. And somebody's doing some data, data entry into the accounting system, so there's labor and equipment spent there. There's an info, invoice approval process, and, and you'll hear me when I talk to folks say, hey, tell me about that. Walk me through. How do you get these things through your organization, your, through your company to get approved? And at the end of that, what happens? Are you filing them? Are you using storage on-site, off-site? Uh, you know, and what happens when you have questions like audits or questions from vendors? Hey, thanks for that payment. Can you give me some more detail on what invoices you paid? We've probably all heard that one, right? So I got to go back and find that information. You know, cost of duplicate in, uh, payments. We're all moving at such a rapid pace. I was talking, speaking with a company this morning. It was kind of ironic. I'm, I'm chuckling a little bit. Is the fact that you know it, they're growing so rapidly. They're not going to hire. They're not going to double their accounting staff to, to meet the, the, the needs. You know that theme that we heard over a decade ago: do more with less, is now more relevant today than ever before. So we're looking at technology to replace or, or circumvent or, or supplement the, the ser services and support that we have in our existing staff. And at the end of that process, there's always that uh, dreaded missed discounts. I used to call this the Vegas effect. Now, vendors offer you an early pay discount because they know <laughs> they got a good feeling or they're ready to roll the dice that you're never going to get through this process from beginning to end in order to capture that discount. So there are some of the problems. Everything you see here is time, energy, and people. And more often than not, when we talk to companies about automating this process, it isn't about reduction of staff, 
It's been about improving the experience of the people that we have in our organizations, leveraging technology that, frankly, if we looked in the mirror, we would say we use it at home, right? I'm, I'm an older guy. I, I go online. I pay my bills. I shop at Amazon.com. This thing shows up on my doorstep. I don't have to go to the mall. I have uh, my fuel bill. I live up in the Northeast. is automatically debited for oil during the heat, during the cold winter months. Those things, my cell phone. Uh, but then we come to work and we do the complete opposite, right? We get invoices, paper, email. We start a process. We work through it every day. At the end, we kind of wipe our brow and say, Phew, we made it through another month, another quarter, another year. It wasn't uncomfortable, it may be a little bit uncomfortable, but it wasn't overall com uncomfortable, so not enough reason to change that process. So let's take a look at some of the other things that are associated with um, uh, accounts payable automation. What are the trends? As I referenced, there's a company called Paystream Advisor that people pay, pay money to go out and do this research. So let's take a look at the, what's happening in, in the beginning part of AP. Invoices are being received, so how are they being received? We're seeing a pretty good shift. Uh, from in, uh, vendors emailing them, you know, printing them out, putting them in an envelope, a stamp, and sending them out to you, to sending them via email. Uh, it's amazing that vendors still mail invoices. Does anybody find that particularly interesting, the fact that they haven't realized they could email you the invoice and save themselves some postage and some paper and get it to you a lot quicker? Um, so those are the two big, you know, they represent, you know, well over 70% of the way invoices come in today. They're really being received via paper and email. And the irony about that is when it hits you, uh, what happens? Those invoices, those email invoices, a lot of folks I talk to, I say, what do you do with that email invoice? Well, I print it out. I've got to have a hard copy because I've got to get it around my organization. Or I have to scan it. I have to attach it to another email to send it out for people for approval. So a lot of this stuff is being uh, you know, captured, whether it's via mail or email, put into a, a paper process and then making its way throughout the organization. Yeah, a lot of folks are tapping in the email for uh, approval, right? Let's attach the invoice and get it out. So what Paystream Advisors is finding here, that 70% of all invoices are still being received in a manual format. So it's, it's kind of interesting statistic when you think about it. So we have to identify, extract, and convert data into a digital format to get it, get it into a system. So some of the other trends that we see with Paystream Advisor is on the other end of the, the accounts payable process, our favorite, favorite part. We've gone through this approval process, we've entered it into our accounting system, and now let's pay some of these bills or invoices to our vendors. So what's going on there? What are some of the shifts that we're seeing? Because if you haven't heard of these words, rebates, incentives, discounts, or pay, uh, my, one of my favorite sayings that came out about six years ago is, hey, turn your AP, uh, center, AP department into a profit center. Sounds really weird, doesn't it? <laughs> when you think about accounts payable as a profit center. So there's lots of technology and lots of shifting going on in the, the end process of accounts payable, and that's paying vendors. When you look at some of the statistics here, we're looking at overall versus the SME is really a small company, which make up the, the, the bread and butter of our, the companies here in the United States. That's our small to mid size. Then you've got the middle market and then the enterprise, the big boys. And you look at some of the statistics, some of the interesting that fall out of here is that you look, there's still a high dependence or preference, if you want to call it, to produce a physical paper check and mail it to a vendor. That's really interesting when you think in this day and age when I reference my, you know, my consumer experience, and I'm sure you're very similar, I go online, I pay bills. I had a guy come do service every winter on the furnace downstairs and he yelled up this winter, hey, I'm all set, your furnace is good. And I said, they yelled down, send me an invoice. And he said, no, write me a check. And I almost panicked. I was like, where is that check? <laughs> it was in a drawer somewhere in the kitchen underneath a lot of other stuff, the restaurant flyers. You know, I, I never rarely use a checkbook anymore. So, but in business, we still have a tendency to want to facilitate payments to our vendors via check. So you see some trends that are growing there with commercial cards, uh, wires, ACH. Uh, I'm sure if I was in the room with you, I'd ask, you know, hey, what is your preference or how do you facilitate payments to your vendors? I'd probably get an answer of all four of these. We might have a little credit card. We, the boss might like the Amex. We might use a little wire if we're dealing with some international companies or we could accelerate a payment. We may have attempted to set up ACH through our banker banks to try to get out of the check business. But a lot of the uh, things that we see in business today, ironically, are still facilitated to vendors via a paper check. So let's take a look at, you know, some of the B2B payment trends. You know, uh, the most efficient means by everybody, you know, when we talk about a, the uh, American Finance and Professionals Payment Fraud Survey, is to payments are, is to do it by virtual card or ACH, because it gets you out of that risk of fraudulent activity. Do you know that, you know, studies have been showed that 75% of companies hit by payments fraud 
it fell, we're, we're part of a check scam. Somebody facilitated or created a check that was frauded. With all the security that's now being put on you know, card payments, electronic payments, the check has now become a favorite uh, vehicle for, for, for folks to fraud your organization. So, but we still have a lot of, lot of checks out there in the world. Hey, we're, and by the way, we're pretty interesting you know, as, a, as a country. We're laggards when it comes to uh, a payment processing. Anywhere else around the world, you know, the US is still hung up on this check. So you still have that requirement from vendors. It, it may be your requirement, it may be the vendor. You know, vendors still are driving the, the process to a certain extent. They're saying, hey, send me a check. So you're printing those out and you're sending them out, but they're, they're leaving you exposed to perhaps fraudulent activity. So let's talk about what you should consider. I, wanna, oh, I just want to stop and share a story about a fraudulent activity that I witnessed not that long ago. Uh, it's a favorite story. I'm up in New Hampshire. So it's a, a story of a, a supplier uh, over here in New Hampshire. An employee, trusted employee, was figuring out ways to uh, fraud the company, being very creative, had his access, he had access to the accounting system, was creating dummy invoices and then paying them and then saying that there was no money due. All the time that money was essentially going to his bank account. He got away with about 106000 or so dollars before somebody came in and found him. I had a buddy down in Connecticut, um, his trusted bookkeeper of 25 years, had uh, done the same or similar thing to him. And the only way he found out was that she took a vacation and he brought in a temporary accounting uh, firm, uh, Robert Half. And the, the, the temp came in and said, hey, there's something weird here <laughs> uh, with these invoices and payments. They just don't match up. And lo, lo and behold, he, she had embezzled about $225,000 from him. So uh, paper checks, uh, paper processes leave you exposed to that. So who's at risk? And you know, what role in each role within the finance department, uh, what are they considering when they look at AP automation? So we look at the CFO and what they should consider with AP automation. What are they? What keeps them up at night? You know, what's their worry? What's their nightmare? You know, do they have the right policies and procedures in place for executing from invoice all the way through payment? Do they have the visibility? That's a common theme we hear. I don't know where it is. It comes in via paper, it goes out. I'm not sure if it came back in. I got people tracking, checking, finding, looking all the time to make sure. And no one likes to go to it my month end or quarter end and go, whoa, look what happened. We had an, you know, an invoice come in that was supposed to be processed last month. Now we got to make adjustment after we close the books. So they're always looking at how to reduce costs and improve processes. And reducing costs is typically not headcount reduction in today's world. Remember that, do more with less. It's how else do I, I reduce costs? And a lot of it has to do with improving the process itself. And what, what they should consider when they're looking at the protecting their organization, because these are the figureheads that are out there representing the company as far as growth, planning, future strategy, revenue, top line, bottom line revenue, reducing fraud or exposure of vis and creating greater visibility and accuracy on their reporting. They want effective processes to scale for that growth. Everybody wants to grow, right? It's the good old United States. If we're not growing, we're dying. So from a business perspective, we always want to continue to grow our, our, our operations. And they want insight into spending for budget and, and then control that over, overall uh, cash flow uh, process. Now let's take a look at controllers, what they should consider with AP automation. So what, are they, what keeps them up at night? You know, how can I streamline our AP process and improve cash flow? Uh, where are the bottlenecks in our AP process today that are causing inefficiencies? You know, what, what a controller should consider when looking at automation? Uh, kind of a repository where everything is aggregated and in place where they can find it. it's easily searchable, retrievable. You know, they have to be able to have the flexibility on their approval workflows because in today's world, uh, there are maybe multiple approvers and a lot of companies are centralized in finance, but they have multiple remote locations where people need to be uh, given or granted permission to, to view invoices and approve them, get them back to the organization. They also want faster processing times, greater accuracy and better compliance with tax laws. Uh, these are the folks that sit one, day, one door removed from the AP team. Uh, it's ironic, a few years ago, I was working with a supplier down in the Baltimore, Maryland area. And I walked in and I was, had built up a pretty, pretty good relationship with the controller. He's since retired. Uh, but the office was laid out like logically. There was a CFO's office, uh, Martin. Uh, there was my friend Richard, the controller. And then there was a door. <laughs> and when I opened up the door, guess who I saw? I saw this person. I saw the AP manager <laughs> and the staff. And they had seven AP pr people processing invoices all day long. Uh, they were, they were they, every, all day long they received mail bins. They'd have to open up mail, sort it, scan it, uh, attach it, and get it into some workflow approval. 
So they, they were logically laid out, um, and the AP manager was the one that had their finger on the pulse of what was keeping her staff up every day. <laughs> and they were tired, they were burned out, they were fried. Uh, and they came into a demo for our solution, and they walked in and I had the IT guy, the CFO, the controller, the AP manager, and they said, wait a minute, let's bring the AP processors in. And they brought them in and I was like, uh-oh, uh, here comes six people that don't look very happy. And so as we're setting up, I just asked them, hey, just a quick question. When I say AP automation, what comes to mind? Nobody would answer. They were very quiet. And I was like, uh-oh, this is not going to go well. And finally, one brave soul raised her hand and she, I said, what? And she goes, my job. And I said, oh, this isn't about losing your job. It's about improving your job because I asked her a pointed question. Did you go to uh, school for accounting and finance? She said, yes. In accounting and finance, do they teach you how to, uh, you know, collate, uh, open mail, sort mail, <laughs> uh, file? That's not, why not put your brain to work and, and leverage technology so you're helping with reporting, you're helping with audits, you're helping with uh, building better processes. You know, this technology is all about saving time. So the AP manager keeps them up at night. He's trying to keep their staff happy, you know, keep them in line. And what they're doing is feeding up to the organization, to the control and the CFO, all the data that the CFO eventually needs to make some strategic decisions on where they're going to go. So they have the direct day-to-day -day operations or responsibility for that team. So let's take a look at an AP automation transition roadmap. What do you do when you know it's time? Remember what I said in the beginning, only you know when it's time. I, you know, some people consider me pretty smart, but I know when I come into a room, if you can't tell me why you'd want to do automate this process, there's a high probability that you're not going to do it. Unfortunately, you know, you just have to you have to get to that point in your um, your process where you say, hey, it's broken. Because you know, in, in most cases, when I walk in, I'm not crazy enough to insult you and say, hey, your process is broken. I want to understand it. I want to understand how many people, time and energy is spent here. But if you can't say, hey, you know, we've got some challenges here. You know, whether it's, um, you know, retaining staff, whether it's helping grow the business, I'm not getting more budget. Uh, so technology may be able to help you with that. So you'll know when it's time. But first of all, it, when you get there, you have to understand what your costs and potential savings are. So we're talking about an ROI, right? The return on your investment. And the return on investment typically does, that, as I mentioned, I'll mention uh, repeatedly, it's not about staff reduction. It's about improving efficiency. I have highly skilled, trained, and paid people in these, in these processes and these steps if I could put them in a role that helps me grow the organization as opposed to pushing paper through it, um, I probably get, I'm probably going to get a better ROI. So you have to understand your costs. Then you have to build a, a list of your unique system requirements. What does that mean? Uh, I recently, some uh, new folks started with Avid Exchange, and I do a little bit of training with them on AP. And um, they said, I don't understand this accounts payable process, Mike. And I said, it's pretty easy. Uh, people buy stuff, and then you pay for it. They said, really? I said, yeah. But everything that happens between the middle part of buying and paying is very complicated. So you have to understand your unique system requirements. How does stuff throw through your organization? Are you working with a purchase order? Do you have inventory? Those things are important to know as you're looking at solutions. Then turn your suppliers into partners. It's all about a life cycle, right? We're dependent on our suppliers. They send, we buy goods and services from them. They send us an invoice. We process that invoice. We pay that invoice to the vendor. How could we make, how could we align ourselves better with our suppliers uh, to work on early pay discounts, set up better discounts, things of that nature. So make them involved in this process. Get them involved. You know, you're gonna, they're going to see efficiencies because guess what? Uh, they, you know, many of you are suppliers in your own right. So your number one goal is to get paid, right? So if, if these technologies can be leveraged to facilitate these payments to these vendors, get the information through a process quicker, they're going to get their money faster. And then access, uh, assess success in areas for improvement. That's the, always the number four, the last thing in the, the grid of improvement is keep going back and testing. Keep looking, you know, how, how are we doing? Give yourself a scorecard. What areas could we improve on? What things could we address? Because what we found here at Avid Exchange in 18 years of providing this solution to our clients is you're gonna get enormous amounts of time back. So that now you'll have time to look at areas of improvement and actually work on them. You know, I can't tell you how many times people I've met uh, in 2017 who said, hey, I'm ready to automate. Well, it's May of 2018, they still haven't, they still haven't pushed the button because they just don't have time. You, know, you, you get on the phone with them, and you can just hear it in their voices. We'd love to do this. We're just so buried in our process today. We don't have time. How are we going to get there? And we, were, and we brought a lot to the table to try to help accelerate this process. But let's take a look at you know, um, how automation revolutionizes your process. 
So this typically maps out, uh, we, we use this in a lot of conversations with folks, uh, financial folks, which is really walk us through what you do today. You know, how does invoices come in? Is it coming mail and email like we talked about? Who's opening the mail? Who's downloading the email? Do you have to print the email out? Do you have a purchase order? Where's it stored? Who controls it? <laughs> now, how do you get information out to folks to approve the invoices? Are they centralized? Are they remote people? Does that include an email with an attachment? Who does the coding? Do you trust them to code or you keep that within finance? And what's that approval process look like? Is it a stamp, a signature, a highlighter, a corresponding email saying good to pay? And then who's doing the data entry? How many people, how much time, how many invoices on a monthly basis do you run through this process? Then once it's in your accounting system posted to GL, then you're ready to pay vendors. How do you pay vendors? How does it, what's that look like? Are you using the, the, what we referenced before, uh, wires, ACH, paper checks? You know, at the end of this magic rainbow of um, buying goods and services and paying for them, where's that invoice go? Do you have a doc management system? Or is it in a, is it in a filing cabinet? Um, and after a while, where does that go? Does it go off site to storage? And so what happens when you've got research, when a vendor asks a question or an auditor asks a question? I had a back-to-back -back meetings a couple of weeks ago with some uh, finance folks, two CFOs gave me some interesting story on audits <laughs> so, about what they do to their auditors. I'm like, wow, that doesn't sound a lot of fun. Uh, one actually turns the temperature way down the conference room to make it a little uncomfortable so that they go, and the other one calls it the white bike box of death. They put all the invoices and the vendor folders in a box and just put it in the conference room and wish them well. I, I think you want more collaborate, co collaboration with your auditors personally, but that was their preference. So everything you see here that's grayed out with our logo, that X, is removed by software and services. Yep, we're in the cloud. We're software as a service, so you'll be leveraging our software. We build your portal in 45 days or less, guaranteed. We help you automate your process, uh, set up the workflow. It's your portal. You're in charge of who has access, what they can see, and what they can do. So everything that you see here that is grayed out is replaced by software and services, and this equates to a lot of time. Sometimes as much as 60% of an AP person's time in a month is now given back to them because all these steps are now uh, seamlessly built within leveraging technology so you have a view of it when it was first received all the way through its life cycle. It's an audit trail is built electronically. I'm going to show you that. We're going to jump into a demo in a quick second. So how does it all begin? How do we get this stuff into your AP portal? It starts with invoice capture. And there are really three ways. They kind of mirror what's happened in today's world. Hey, your vendor is set up with an email. You may have an AP inbox, or they may just send them to you. <laughs> and so uh, we, you can, uh, you, we, can e we can accept emailed invoices. We can accept paper. Uh, we procure a lockbox for many of our customers. We go to the mail post office, we pick it up and start the scanning process. We have processing centers on the east and west coast. So we've got your blanket it from that perspective. Or the U-scam. You know, somebody walks in and says, hey, Mike, I just bought this. Here's my Staples invoice. <laughs> so how do I get it into my AP automation system? You simply scan it and drop it in. Well, let's talk about that. So how, where's this, hey, I've got these invoices. I get them into a system like an Avid Exchange. Now, what's that look like? So let's give you a quick look at a demo. So I'm going to, let me just set this up properly so I bring up my the portal for you. So what happens first is that folks are alerted that they have work for them. So this is the portal that we would build for our clients. So uh, we would brand it for you. Um, so I, I would get an email alert. In this case, I'd be Marie Cannon. She's one of the AP people. Because usually we find that there's somebody in finance, the gatekeeper. Um, so what, she's going to get an email. She's going to log in. Uh, is this going to be her work queue? I just want to give you a quick tour of this. So we love, love an opportunity if you'd like to see a deeper dive, get a little bit more technical about how this all works. But this is their invoice queue. So it says she's got 24 pending or approval. So you can simply you know, log in, see an invoice, pull it up on the system. So you can see it on all its beauty and glory. So a lot of times folks will ask us if we can scan in invoices for them to show them what they look like in the portal. So we create, we render it in a PDF. So if I needed to print it, I could or download it. So whether it's one or 100 pages, I can simply scroll through it. We're verifying the header detail. This is the time we save, the, the invoice total, the due dates, the, the associations between the supplier, the department, the location, a PO is here, it could be referenced. Uh, we provide uh, the ability to then uh, uh, provide coding support. And I say support, we can automate coding because everybody's got these invoices called recurring. Uh, so every month, if you, if you code it once in our system and it comes back, you'll never have to code it again. It's already prepared. You can always edit and override it. And the other one is if I do a distribution where I'm, I'm going to share this invoice across multiple departments and, and, uh, and entities, I can save that next time it comes back, it'll be coded. I can attach things to the invoice. 
uh, anything that's going to help corresponding uh, communication to reflect why they somebody should approve it. So it could be a packing slip, a receiving document, a price sheet. I can comment. I can comment uh, internally and externally. And you can see in the comment trail, everything is date and time stamped. And that's going to be an important part of the audit trail, which is really, uh, and a lot of folks, when I first show this to them, they're like, ooh, that's pretty cool. You know what that would take for me to do manually to pull all this information together? Is if, if the system is doing all that tracking for me, I don't have to. I can just pull a report. Uh, workflows are, can be mapped and configured. I can always modify it, assign an ad hoc approver if somebody's out. Uh, in this case, we're just showing a simple four-step workflow. We follow a sequence, step one, two, and three. Uh, we have the ability to have one or multiple people in the workflow step. We can help filters, like Jim Johnson as a VP of finance, doesn't need to see invoices uh, under a certain dollar amount, so he won't be involved in this one because it's certainly way under $5,000. And then when this comes back to AP, we then the AP department does their final review and it's ready for the accounting system. And then the most important part of this is that audit trail, uh, at least what people tell me, is that every time we capture an invoice for our clients, you see the word system, that's the Avid Exchange system saying on the 11th at 1.38, 11.38 this invoice came in, who touched it, what they did with it from an approval perspective, and then everything is reportable. So I can generate a quick ad hoc report so the boss can come if I'm, a, you know, if I'm the AP manager or the controller and the boss says, hey, where do we stand today on invoices uh, by the month? I want to know that what's approved, what's disputed, what's pending approval. I can run a quick query on the approved invoices. I can do it by invoice number, supplier, PO, date, lots of searchable criteria here. I could just say, hey, Abbott, uh, pull, up, pull me up a report. And I'm just going to generate a quick report so you can see, you know, how quick and efficient it is. And just to select a few invoices, create the report, give me the invoice image along with the coding, the header detail, any payment detail that may be available there. So we're reaching now out to the Avid Exchange data, uh, database, and we're doing a quick query. It's going to pull back a PDF report. Uh, that PDF report can now be downloaded, printed, emailed, sent out for a meeting. Um, and so we have this report. Uh, you look at it, it's 18 pages worth of financial data. These are the invoices I selected. You can see the header information, coding, who touched it, what they did, how long it was in, any payment information, and actually the invoice uh, that's available here in this report. Now, most, most folks I talk to and show this to are like, wow, that would take me hours to pull all this information together uh, for my boss. So uh, lots of power here on the portal. So that's kind of a teaser of what we can do. Uh, there's certainly a lot more capability here, but I just wanted to kind of plant the seeds that if you're interested in taking a, a, a look, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, it's all about research. This uh, webinar is intended as uh, education. So we wanted to supply you uh, content, uh, kind of pique your curiosity, uh, help you build your case for AP automation. So uh, let's uh, wrap this thing up. So, uh, oh, one other thing I should point out, because if you look at all this is out there available today, and guess what we all depend on these days, even my 83-year-old mother-in-law, it's her cell phone, right? This is all mobile. So now I have access to AP information, whether it be invoice and payments via my phone. Uh, Avid Exchange doesn't require you to download a, a special app. You just have, we compress the data to fit the device that you're looking at it on. So it gives you the ability to be out of the office and, and be able to act on invoices and payments without having to come back. So, and then of course we have to supply a testimonial. So, <laughs> so in this case, this AP manager that I know, she says that we reduced the amount of time that she's used for filing uh, the approval process by 80%. Um, it's easy to use anytime, anywhere, and access is, is a great advantage. So you have 24 seven access to AP data. So it's, it's been a, a pleasure speaking with you today. We're gonna do a couple, we're gonna do a quick poll um, as, as always, if you'd like some further information, make sure to reach out to Aaron and team, and we'd be happy to set up some time to show you what, we, what we're all about and see if we fit for your organization. So let's take a look at the poll questions. So you should have these up on your screen. And while we're waiting, why don't we just jump into some um, Q&A. So I, I know I, I got some questions in advance of, of the webinar from Aaron and team that you know folks typically have asked them. Um, you know, about Avid Exchange, because uh, as Aaron articulated, it's perhaps one of the more, um, uh, you know, frequently asked questions and topics that we're finding in finance today. Uh, because without a doubt, it's like, hey, this uh, this whole consumer experience is now uh, permeating the workforce because those other folks are coming to work for us, those 
those uh, Gen X, those <laughs> millennials that, that are very familiar with uh, mobile technology, and they're looking at us cross-eyed going, what are you doing? <laughs> why, why are you dealing on paper? I don't even know what that is. Um, so a lot of this technology is now taking place, so um, in, in now entering the workforce via, um, oops, sorry, went too far. So how's the poll coming? We're right at 75%, so I'll keep it up for just one more second. And um, Mike and Aaron, if you just want to provide any following remarks before we close out. Sure. So, Aaron, um, any any comments, any questions uh, from you or from the team or clients that you'd like to share? Yeah, I really appreciate the, the overview, Mike. I think what we're um, hoping that we can help our clients accomplish is just always you know, choosing the best technology to help automate business processes, as you uh, mentioned throughout the presentation and a little bit of the demonstration today. The processes behind AP can be nuanced and unique for different companies. Um, you know, at the beginning of the webinar, I mentioned an organization that has a decentralized AP process. We've had other organizations that have turnover and staff, and so maybe they have an AP clerk. Um, that was really fast and furious and could key everything in, and now they're having a trouble um, potentially replacing that person. So they're looking at how they can use automation to help put their staff to work on uh, more high-value um, opportunities within the workplace. And so I think those are some of the key drivers that we've seen. Um, and, of course, if anyone on the webinar today, again, you get the recording, you want to pass it along to anybody else within the organization, or you want to reach out, to my team here at Oasis, we'll get you to the right person that can help conduct the conversation and really dig down and discover what your specific business requirements are and make sure that Avid is a, is a really good fit. Um, there's a good value there for uh, going through this project together. Thank, thanks, Aaron. Really appreciate the time. So it, it's been a pleasure being introduced to uh, some some of your additional clients. We've done this periodically throughout the years that we've worked together, so we always value our, our partners uh, exposing us to their their customers as they go about their their duty of doing the research. So, you know, Avid Exchange is a, a cloud-based uh, automation solution. Uh, that what that means for your IT folks is there's no hardware or software that you're buying. It's a simple build your portal in 45 days or less. It's a transaction model, which means you only pay for what you process through the portal. Uh, it, it really uh, maintains the integrity of your accounting system. Your ERP system is your financial processing system. We're just helping uh, control, help you know, accelerate controls and visibility on the front end and, and, and on the back end from invoice all the way through payment. So it's been a pleasure, Aaron and team, and uh, wish you all the best today. And um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or like to take a, a deeper dive, as they say. Great. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate your and Brittany's help, and uh, we appreciate everyone joining us today. That ends our webinar session, and look out for the recording and reach out. Let us know how we can help. Take care.